the betting, uh, the not so much uh, anymore is more down to my own fault. Uh, I need to uh, I need to get studying again to to get the edge back. But yeah, it's a great product. I love the exchange. It's uh, it's really it's uh, in my opinion one of the better bookmakers, if not the best bookmaker out there. Race number two on the day kicks off the bipod. Quarter past 12, the time that you need to get your bipod bets on. It's 1,200 meters the distance. This is a maiden plate for the Phillies and Mares. And uh, at the time of recording, it's a full field of 13 that line up for this event. But uh, before we get into race number two, let's uh, listen to the interview. Hi, my Macy. I'll give you one guess who, who named her, Ashwin. <laughs> um, yeah, she's a filly that's, that's shown ability and work. However, it will be her first run. She hasn't galloped at, at Gravel. She's, she's seen Scottsville. Uh, a nice filly, a very wide draw. Uh, she is going to need a little bit. She is going to be a little bit green and we'll be using this as an educational run. Educational run about number 13. Uh I'm not even going to try to pronounce that name, but... Okay, uh, my Macy. Okay, my Macy. Okay, we leave it up to you, Dees, well but... Bridge, she's well -bridge. She's a half-sister to that uh, sprinter, Sarah. I think she's a really nice filly that I want to have to... I really want to have a look at her because it's a bold move for Michelle racing this two-year-old against this type Especially of Especially from a deep draw. Correct. No, I, I looked up that pedigree and I said, yeah, this looks like an exciting horse. Okay, my Macy. What do you like? He's, I think it's uh, it's a race where obviously Justin Snaith, he he's got his he puts his hand up once again yeah and uh, this this fully uh, knockout she ran a very nice race on debut with Keegan Demello aboard against winners and uh, October morn we've seen what uh, she's come out to do and when you just have a look at the the two years in this country when it comes to the fillies Candace Bass Robinson seems to have probably the best fillies. I mean, names that come to mind, the Charleston, Winter Cloud, that was Distant Winter, and even this Philly October Morn, she looks to be useful. So I think uh, this, uh, this horse knockout, she ran behind a decent sword last time out, second in the race. October Morn obviously was third in a, in a group, uh, second in a group three. That horse Golden Sickle was second in a listed event over in PE. Oni San coming through to win. So I think she's a horse that's only going to get better with time. She's the further, the better for her. And then you have Kingdom of Gold, but a horse that I think is some decent value in the race is number two, which is Valley Girl from the Doug Campbell Yard. Now she was uh, lost on debut, she was all at sea, she was quite green, and she only got going late on in the day. She's drawn in the gate number two, I think that run would have, would have brought her on. She's currently at around 14 to one in the market, and I think that she represents the value in the race. She was beaten five and a half lengths, but she was doing her best work at the finish. I'm not convinced about the strength of the form line, but in saying that, I think she's a horse that's uh, going to improve with that run. And Doug Campbell actually expected a positive effort from her on debut. So despite her going off at odds of 50 to one, it wasn't a surprise to her connections that uh, she ran a bit of a decent race on debut. So I think around those horses, two, four, six, could possibly fight out the finish, but uh, no doubt the value number two, Valley Girl at 14 to one. I'm going to go four, four, five, and six in no particular order, but I do think that Justin Snate's runner sets the standard, and this could be a certain knockout if this double has to arrive, the Snate for redouble, because punters are going to latch onto these two horses. Bitcoin Baby, she ran her heart out. I think it's a smart move. It could be the right move, the pace and speed she showed last time out over 1,400 meters to drop her in distance. Uh, she never threw in the towel. Miss Shabby was a strong favorite on the day. Uh, Bosnay. Daryl Moore's runners come out to win. And then Kingdom of Gold. Now, if you watch racing on Thursday, I think that was a fantastic ride by Gavin Larina for Robin Clausen on Dolcesa to come out and enhance the form line. And although this horse, you know, wasn't fancied in the betting, I think there's more to come from Kingdom of Gold. So I think the winner is going to come from numbers four, five, and six, leading with number six. But Ryle has found a nice outsider there for you, number two, Valley Gal. That could certainly boost the trifectas and quartets. How many numbers for you in the, the place accumulator? Um, well, a uh, bipod, bipod rather, these. Yeah, and uh, the yeah, I'll, I'm going to go with numbers two and six. Two and six, six yeah. uh, for Ryle in the bar pot. I think I'm going to just play it safe. I really like the look of six, but I'm not as confident as Rabidash in race number one. So I'm just going to cover this with numbers four and five. So hoping to double and maybe even treble up here. So it's a nice race to get involved in race number two. Get your bar pot on by 12.15, quarter past 12.
Hi, it's Donovan Everture from Cape Racing and uh, I'd just like to say it's an absolute pleasure to be involved with uh, Intrabet and Cape Breeders in this, uh, in this golf day today here at Pearl Valley. Um, it's fantastic for the industry to see all the relevant stakeholders coming down and having a good time and networking and it's exactly what the, the industry needs right now in terms of moving forward and recreating some positivity to take us forward into the next year.